the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. The Evergreen Park Mustangs are three and zero. Oh, it's another Football Friday. Here with the EP Podcast and belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. My name is Chris. You're in my basement. It's not exactly going to be 30 minutes of good because this is more of a coach's show. Head coach Jerry Verdi is going to be joining us very shortly. And it's all brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. They invest in the Evergreen Park community. After all, they love this area as much as you do. Plus, their total access checking account gives you free ATMs nationwide and a $300 bonus with qualifying activities. Paired with their mobile banking tools and award-winning customer service, switching to a true community bank has never been easier. Start banking locally today, just like me. BankEvergreenPark.com slash 300. Go there. $100 $100 required to open, no minimum monthly balance, no monthly maintenance fee. Must use link to apply or stop in and see them in that iconic building at 95th and Pulaski, member FDIC. If you have not listened to the EP podcast, the regular show that comes out each and every Monday this week, make sure you go back and check it out. Frank Murray came down here, brought his own guest. We had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun and found out about a marathon that is the shortest marathon I've ever heard of. I'm definitely going and doing it. And you get to drink a lot of craft beer at it from a bunch of different breweries. It's coming up. That's just one of the many things on that 30 minutes of good found anywhere. Podcasts can be found and always at the EP podcast.com coming up on Monday. We've got a full show. And at some point we're going to have to discuss what's going on in the Southwest quadrant. Holy cow. I watched the guy in a minivan drive across his neighbor's lawn, his neighbor's neighbor's lawn, go through two trees just to get over a curb so he can get out of his driveway. It's like a war zone over there right now. Like, I know it's got to be done, and I get it, and nobody likes inconvenience, trust me. They took the sidewalk off in between where my car was and where the street was in my driveway the other day, and they never knocked to tell me they were going to do it. So I've also driven across a lawn. We're all off-roading these days in the Southwest Quadrant. If you don't need to come to that quadrant, just stay away until the work is done. Uh, It's just my warning to you. It's nuts. Village put out an update saying that the first half of the concrete and removal phase ending this week and the second half beginning by the time you've heard this podcast. That's the plan. That's good news. So I guess we're halfway through that. Quick note before we get to head coach Jerry Verdi. There is an Oktoberfest coming to Evergreen Park. It is officially announced now, October the 8th. We had already talked about it a little bit on this show. It's one of many Oktoberfests that we'll be going to in the area. But mark your calendars for the 8th of October. 2 p.m. start goes till 9 p.m. at the Community Center, right off of Circle Park or Klein Park, whatever you call it, 3450 West 97th Street. They're going to have music and food and drinks, and it's going to be for all ages, and the EP podcast will be out there, and we're doing the Stein Hoisting competition from what I understand, and I cannot wait for it. Mark it down on your calendars. The head coach of the Evergreen Park Mustangs, the only undefeated team in their conference, going for win number four this weekend, Jerry Verdi, next, right here on the EP Podcast. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, They want to get together and chat. Call your local country financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708-425-1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. Once again, here for a football Friday, Evergreen Park High School head coach Jerry Verdi on the line. Three and zero, coach. How are you? I'm good, Chris. Yeah, three and zero. Three and zero feels pretty good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing, generally. Three and zero. I will tell you this though: I was surprised by 
how close the score was. I, I, maybe I shouldn't say that kind of thing. I'm sure Oaklawn is a great team, but after I watched the first two games, which were like blowouts, uh, this was a tight one here. W- what happened? Well, for you, you hit it on the nose to start. I mean, Oakland battled the the whole game, and and uh, you know they they kept fighting. There were there were multiple instances during the game where we might have been able to pull away, but they kept battling. And then we made a lot of mental mistakes uh, on Friday. We we made a lot of mental mistakes and didn't execute in some some key situations. And that's really been a, a point of emphasis for us uh, coming into this week. You know, you you analyze. Why did these things happen? And, well, one of the reasons why it happened is because we were tired. Tired players, tired teams make mental mistakes. They, they lose their discipline a little bit, and, um, and, and you usually pay a price for that. So we really emphasized uh, conditioning this week and, and, and really trying to address those, those mental mistakes that happened um, week three you know, on Friday. How do you get through to kids that they – need to work on something when they can sit there and say, yeah, but we're, we're three and oh, like I know some kids, even in a loss, sometimes are like, yeah, I could have done better in that. But some will look at the thing and say, well, we won. Well, you know, when, when you, when you play and coach football, uh, you watch film and you know, that that's been going on since, uh, for a very long time in this game. And there's, there's one phrase that, that rings true and that's the uh, film doesn't lie. You know, we don't superimpose people in, in, in situations or anything like that. Um, you can watch the film, you can watch the play, and, and you can see what happened. You can see the mistakes that were made. You can talk about what should have happened on a specific play, and, and that's how you learn from that, you know, because uh, what ends up happening at the end of the game where, where there's been 120 plays that went on is they all kind of, uh, you know, kind of muddle into one, and you don't remember things exactly the way they happened. But when you watch it on film, you know, there it is. Tim O'Brien from the Beverly Review was just on Southside Pod, one of the other podcasts on this network, and was talking to me about all the area teams on the South Side, and he brought you guys up. I think they're solid, um, you know, because it they're in potentially like the worst possible spot ever because up the street is Brother Rice, uh, St. Reed is close, Marist is close, Mount Carmel's close, relative you know, that they recruit the area well. So they kind of fly under the radar a lot, that they're just there surrounded by all these powerhouse private schools. They're good. They're not going to go win the 5A title necessarily, but they're a solid team who should be in the playoffs. They can go 7-2, and 6-3, and three, maybe 8-1 and one if things fall their way and kids stay healthy. But they've had a good run there, and Coach Jerry Verdi does a, a good job with the program. Um, you know, he works with those lower numbers and him and his coaching staff just put the kids in the right place. And, you know, the last couple of years they've delivered more often than not. So it, it's all like the barometer. Who knows where they can go? But no, they're a legit good team. They should, uh, you know, if they can get past Richards this weekend, who's struggling, but it's Richards. It's one of the best programs in the South Suburban. They're a team you got to watch to potentially chase that conference title, which would be huge for the Mustangs. What do you think when you hear that from guys that are covering all these different teams on the South side and they, they single your program out after three weeks and say, watch that team? Well, it's, it's appreciated. Um, you know, it's, it's always nice to have anything nice was said about you. Um, so from that standpoint, it's nice, but, um, you know, we work pretty hard at, at, at what we do here, and, um, you know, it, it's it's not a big secret that, you know, as far as, you know, numbers-wise, uh, population for our school, for the teams we play, the teams we play have a, a, a usually double our population, um, you know, when, when we when we step out onto the field. Um, so, you know, we've got to work a little bit harder. We have to have a little bit more focus, and, and for the most part, we, we believe that we, we do that, you know. Uh, very few things that happen on a football field happen by accident. Um, you have to practice them. You have to plan for them. And, um, you know, we've been able to do that for the first three weeks. And, and you know, we really do think we can compete moving forward. And, and uh, we think, you know, we, we've been in every game we've been in. Uh, we've been in every game we've played for the last two years. Uh, the only bad, really bad game we had was our playoff game, unfortunately, against Sycamore last year. But, you know, we've changed the culture to the point where we enter every game believing we can compete. And when the players believe, you know, that they can win, then they can. You know, when players enter a game saying, well, 
if we get lucky, we can win. Well, you've already lost that game because, um, you know, in their mind that doubt already exists. And then once one thing goes wrong and something always goes wrong during a game, they start saying things like, well, there it is. That's, that's what happened. And I knew this was going to happen. And, 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 and you don't battle back instead of taking a step back and saying, well, you know, we've got to fix this. We've got to work this, you know, and, and that's kind of the attitude we have now, as opposed to maybe a slightly defeatist attitude previously. Before we get to the game that's coming up here on Friday, uh, let's talk real quick about your player of the game or players of the game. I know it was the offensive line in week one. You singled out a player in week two. Uh, do you have one for this victory over Oak Lawn? There's a lot of guys that, that had some pretty pretty good games um, on, on Friday night. Uh, defensively, uh, besides a couple big plays, we played pretty well and we were anchored inside by, you know, Caleb Kulovitz and, and um, uh, Asiel Rubacaba. Rubacaba. Uh, but um, I would say the player of the game this week would ha- have to be uh, uh, Antonio Clay Jones. When you're, when you're averaging almost nine yards a carry and you've scored three touchdowns, you, you, you've had a good night. And, and he ran very hard. A lot of the yards he had uh, on Friday night was happened after first contact. He broke that first tackle and was able to gain more yardage. And for us, you know, that's the difference in the game. It really is. He kept, he kept moving the the uh, the down markers, kept getting us those key first downs, and he played very well. And obviously, the offensive line um, did a pretty good job blocking for him. Uh, you know, especially on a few select plays where he was able to break a, a larger run. He did have a he had a 50 yard run on, on Friday night too, which is was really impressive. You know, I find it interesting just sitting and talking with you each week. I'm starting to get the idea that, you know, offensive line, running backs, a uh, lot of good yards on the ground. Uh, is that really like your your center to your offense, that ground game? Because it seems like if the if you're moving on the ground, if those guys down in the trenches are doing well, you're going places every week. Yeah, I mean, that's high school football. I mean, you can you can have as complex an offense as, as you can imagine. Uh, but the bottom line is if you can't run the football in high school, you have a real difficult time winning a football game. Um, you know, when you run the ball, you, 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 the clock moves, you're getting those first downs and, um, you know, you, you, you have the other team on their heels, you know, um, there's a lot, there are teams out there that'll pass more than they run, but still, if they could run the ball, they would run it as opposed to pass it. And, and that, that is, you know, that's the key to high school football. It really is. You got to have a running game if you want to have a good offense in high school. You know, and that's, that's always been true. And you see the same thing in college, too. Now, the pros are, is a little bit different because uh, it's such a pass-oriented league nowadays. But um, when you're talking high school and college, the running game is, is usually the center point. All right. You got Richards. You're traveling there. You're both 1-0 in the conference. But you are the only undefeated team over three weeks in this conference. They're 1-2. and two. They had really tough matchups the first two weeks. They get by Eisenhower in a close game, but Eisenhower's up this year. What, what do you think of this Richards team that you're going up against? Because every year I hear, good program, okay? This year, off to a slow start. How do you evaluate what Richards is at this point going into the game? Well, you, we start with, first and foremost, we, we have a ton of respect for Richards. Uh, you know, when you, when you do it every single year, you know, you don't do it by accident, and, and, and they do. They, they always they have a good team every year, and and even if you, you say that they're down one year, um, they're still really good. <laughs> you know, their idea of down is, is someone else's being way up. Um, but, um, you know, we, we, we feel we can compete this week. Um, the last two years we've played, Richards, we've had chances to win, and we just haven't, we haven't finished it. We lost by a touchdown last year with a tie game right up until the end, and, and um, we lost it in a way we didn't feel real great about. We missed some plays we could have made, and and that that's, that was one that got away from us last year. It, it really is. So, you know, we go into this game believing we can compete, and if we believe we can compete, we can. You know, um, they've got some uh, good running backs. They've got some really good wide receivers. They have one one uh, receiver out there. He's six foot five, and and he's very athletic. And and so we're you know we've got a challenge ahead of us. But um, like I said, our, our center point to our team, I've been saying this all along, is, is our line play on the offensive line and the defensive line. And 
we definitely think we can compete against them in the trenches. And, and if you can compete against a team in the trenches, you know, you give yourself a chance. And, and, and we believe we have that going, um, you know, going into this game. I, I asked that question, and I hear you bring up two games, two years in a row that you feel like you could have won, should have won. Is it safe to say this is a game that the coach is up for, that you want this one? Well, you always want to compete against Richards. I mean, you 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 want to compete against the best teams on your schedule. Um, not only is it, you know, it, it, it's good for the program, um, but it also, you know, gives you kind of a, uh, that litmus test for, you know, what, what, what do things look like, you know, possibly getting into the playoffs, that kind of situation. So, I mean, it, you know, this, this is an important game for us, but, but the biggest importance to the game is, is, you know, how we take the field and, and after kickoff, what we do for those four quarters. And, and in the end, if, if we've got the lead, then wonderful. Um, but we have to compete all four quarters. We have to compete. 6.30 start Friday night at Richards. 3-0 and Evergreen Park tries to go in there and I think make a little bit of a statement and also show that last week's mistakes can be fixed and this team can get rolling uh, in conference play. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thanks again for jumping on the EP podcast. Thank you very much. Another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the dude is basement. And the dude is basement. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. And it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. And by the looks, it's going to be a good one. It is basement. Oh, broadcast. Basement. The Nudis Basement The Broad Basement Slancha The EP Podcast Heard everywhere podcasts can be found And always at theeppodcast.com